one of these books sounds like it has this premise? A group of girls are competing for the love of a wealthy and powerful suitor. And there's a whole process of elimination and contest. It's kind of like if The Bachelor got smashed into a ball with Hunger Games. Oh, your answer is all of these? Well, you are absolutely right. We're going to talk about one of these specifically today. So, first off, let me tell you which one we're not going to focus on. We're not going to focus on the pageant yet. That's coming up in another video. And we're not going to focus on the glittering cork quite yet either, but don't worry, those videos are coming. Today, we are going to be focusing on Royal Replicas by Michael Pierce. Now, I know that you can't really see the cover of the greatest with the screen. I don't actually have a physical copy of this book yet. Trust me, I'm gonna get one eventually because, spoilers, I liked it. Now, just to be clear, there are spoilers, heavy, 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 crazy, heavy, explosive spoilers for Royal Replicas Book One, as well as some spoilers for the selection, the pageant, and the glittering court, since I am doing a little bit of compare and contrast with them. So, be warned. Only proceed with this video if you are okay with getting spoilers. Okay? Awesome. So then, with that little opening bit out of the way, it's booktube time. So, first off, a little bit of background on what probably inspired Royal Replicas. So, that goes back to this book, The Selection, which is often considered the inspiring point of all of these pageant contest romances. So basically the gen general premise is girl ends up in competition to win the heart of a boy, usually a prince. So, and of course there's sometimes a love triangle, oftentimes, okay, Actually, the entire, all, always in these books, this is kind of like a stable besides the whole competition aspect between the girls, there is a little outside force of some civil unrest. Sometimes it's outright war, other times it's just prejudice and secret keeping and all that jazz. So, the selection which was probably pitched, I know it was pitched that way on the internet, but probably pitched to the publisher as, hey, you remember how much people like the Hunger Games? Yeah, remember how much they like The Bachelor? What? But what if we threw them together? The Bachelorette meets The Hunger Games, except with a lot less murdery stuff. It's actually not really like The Hunger Games at all, except for the fact that if they were in the Hunger Games, some of these girls would probably be pretty darn lethal. So the selection followed America Singer. As much as I love this series, I gotta say it, and I know I'm gonna say it many times after this. That's my name, America Singer. <laughs> cringe, cringe so hard. I prefer her, her nickname, so much better. So she ends up getting chosen with the selection, which is done via a Hunger Games-esque lottery system, and has to go and try to win the Hard Friends Maxim. And there's 35, and there's a civil war, there's a ton of girls, um, I think it was 35, yes, it's 35, the back cover is reminding me, yes it is, 35. So they get to live in luxury, it's they live in a Hunger Games-esque world, kind of, where they're, well, they live in these places that are kind of like districts, except not really, but instead of one whole district being really poor, it's actually a class system where they're numbered. I'm going to get way more into depth into that during the review of the selection. There's some background so you can know where I'm coming from for Royal Replicas. Um, so they've got 
this whole class system and Mer has this love triangle between a boy from back home and the prince, basically, which is kind of, I've heard people compare it to the whole Katniss scale PETA thing. So anyway, that was a thing. It's a very big thing. It's also a good thing. I liked it. It was my kind of thing I can read without going uh, cringe. Like, there was a tiny bit of cringe, but not a lot. Anyway, I'm getting off track now. So that leads us to the pageant, which was the next selection knockoff that I read. It's actually not that knockoff -y. This instead of, well, the internet, once again, was like, hey, you like the selection, you like this. And Lee Walker, it's an indie book, and I have to say, I love the pageant. Lee Walker's the pageant is really good. Now, what's different is the prince and the royal family are vampires. Yeah, we're going down the vampire route this one. But what's really refreshing is there's no love triangle. He does go and try to get to know the other girls, but behind most of it is him getting to know Gwen, who is Gwyneth, who is the main character, and she and the prince actually have a better relationship during the competition. The other girls are mostly there to be there. It's pretty obvious Gwyneth won from the early onset. I actually like the relationship between the two romantic leads better here. But I mean, Max and Murr would have had something if there wasn't the love triangle aspect. But anyway, so yeah, it's about the love triangle. Uh, the vampire aspect plays a part, but actually not as much. There is a whole subplot which comes to play, and there is war in both these. Grr. But imagine it's a fun read. I liked it. And, um,. And I mean, the pageant, I will say, is kind of the outlier of these inspirations where I unfortunately don't know how many people have read it. Everyone I've talked to has been like, what? So I'm just trying to give this book a bit of a boost. I want to signal boost this book because the pageant's good. Read it. Please read it, seriously. Um, now, the third of these books that I've read in this whole pageant for the prince genre, subgenre, I don't even, does this genre have a name yet? I don't, I don't know actually. Well, I'll figure that out. Um, so with, sorry, I apologize for how battered my copy of The Glittering Court is. It went on vacation with me and there was a tiny little bit of roughness going on with some stuff falling apart. Anyway, so The Glittering Court, is the biggest departure from the selection formula where the main character Ada Adelaide she first off you don't even know the main character's written name to like very end which is awesome second of all she's actually running away trying to start a new life by being part of the splittering court where they compete for the top spot then go to the new world which is totally not America and she ends up falling in love with not the people that are trying to earn her affection the, and the affections of the glittering court girls but the person that brought her to the glittering court so i'd say that the glittering court is actually the most unique of these books and the furthest away from the selection formula but as much as i did enjoy it and i did really enjoy it i enjoy a lot of Rachel Mead's stuff. Um, it actually wasn't quite in the same league as the original selection, or the pageant, or Royal Replicas. So let's get into Royal Replicas because that's what this video is supposed to be about. <laughs> okay, so with the Royal Replicas, our main character, <sighs> this is a bit of a different First off, I knew going in what the twist is, be, kind of, because it kind of was spoiled in the very thing. So, 
sorry, this is a really hard one to explain. <laughs> okay. So, Victoria is basically growing up with this family. She knows she's not theirs, and it's pretty freaking abusive. Like, the... Ooh, the guy in charge of the household is crazily creepy and like the this is the parts I do not like anything with that man in them because those are very much well he doesn't actually assault her he does beat her with a switch till she's completely bruised and bleeding all over and it's very rapey undertones which I do not like, I'm not comfortable with, but anyway, um, getting that elephant out of the room, um, so basically the whole gist of it is the princess of the land has died, but the queen is keeping it a secret. Princess, the princess was very, very ill. So they had her cloned, and there were eight clones, but one died of natural causes unrelated to this thing. The other seven now have to compete to win the heart of the princesses of betrothed and become the new princess and basically live a life. That's a lie. These girls have been raised to memorize facts about the royal family, the princess, manners, etc. And these families were all well compensated. It was just nuts. Now, so this is the part where Victoria is very awesome. First of all, I really like how she's super into horses because horses are my thing and she's a very good rider and her horse Misty is awesome. But so she ends up being told she's the queen's daughter. They aren't told about the whole being clones of the princess until they arrive and they meet each other and they find out, wait a minute, these other girls all look alike. They all act different, but they look alike. Um, the biggest ones of the other girls that stood out were Constance, who at first was like in it to win it, but then she discovers a bit of a thing that no one knew, not even the prince, only the queen knew and the doctors that jacked on these girls. But Constance discovers a big secret, which totally makes her not gun go anymore. But the other one is Bethany, who the prince is kind of treating like Victoria's potential replacement in case he doesn't win. Oh, and of course, back at the back where Victoria was from with the family she was raised with, there are two sisters who don't, the older one, Joanna, doesn't really play a part in this beyond some giving the clo living clothes to her when hers are brutally destroyed. Um, but. Uh, Mina, she ends up going and she has to get spirited away to protect her from the her father's abuses because he starts taking it on her after Victoria leaves. Ugh. So, and then there's this boy, Q. Now, Victoria had actually been reset for insubordination before the beginning of the book. This is covered in a little sidequel or prequel novel or 1.5 that came with the ebook because I did buy the complete series for this. Um, and I get the complete series for this, it was a book book deal. Um, unfortunately, the book book deal ends in like a couple hours, so most of you probably won't be able to get to it on time. But definitely check this out. Um, so I'm not going to talk a lot about what happens, but because I don't want to spoil that one's review, book's review, but basically Victoria and this boy, Kale from the village, bondage, she told them about what happened, they fell in love, they were going to run off together along with Mina, and turned out they got caught, she got reset, memories wiped of him, but he still remembers, and so he follows her to the palace, and tries to not only win her back, but protect her, and he ends up having to leave and protect Mina because of the aforementioned abuse. So... Basically, Victoria starts competing. She falls, does fall in love with the prince. And he does like her the most, although there's a whole Bethany is a replacement in case worse comes to worse. 
Then when Constance reveals the secret she learned and asks the queen if it's true, the queen says, no, it's not. Turns out it is. Of the seven girls, one becomes the princess. The other six get killed. Yeah, the prince isn't up for that. He's very mad. He almost walks out on them, which would have gotten all of them killed. But thankfully, he comes back due to Victoria's begging. Um, so they end up working on trying to make it work while well, Victoria tries to come up with both on her own and with the prince. They actually come up with two different plans. She comes up with one that's total secret to everyone else. And he comes up with one that she's kind of in on, not really, but a little bit, to protect the other girls. So that way he can go and say, oh, it's Victoria, and you're not going to kill the other girls. I'm going to take them and send them to my country. They'll be safe. Hide them away. So, unfortunately, okay, first off, I've got to quick explain the twist. This is the biggest twist. I literally did not see this coming. I, I did kind of see the whole the clones will, the ring clones will get killed thing coming because that's kind of a thing that happens in books that deal with cloning. Um, so, at least cloning in types of multiple clones the same person. So basically, um, Victoria finds out that the princess is still alive. She's very ill, and she's in a secret hospital room type lab thing, being kept alive, and just enjoys her reading on her giant ebook reader, and basically is really, really bored all the time. Bored all the time. But yeah, the princess is still alive, so she becomes friends with the princess and decides that she is going to find a way to free the princess as well because it's not fair that her own mother is telling the rest telling them that the princess is dead and basically pretending that it's basically emotional neglect and abuse medical abuse is what is happening so anyway um victoria is like i'm gonna save everyone else by using these photos i took to show that the princess is really alive and i'm gonna force people to let everyone go and everyone will be happy. Yay! And it'll be all like ponies and puppies and rainbows and cupcakes. Can't forget about cupcakes. Okay, none of that last little few words were actually said by her, but that was the vibe I had. Um, so basically, that ends up being the day for the prince to choose, and he chooses Victoria. The queen goes, nuh -uh. she doesn't, she's insubordinate. Which leads to the question of, then, if you're going to, going to veto her choice, the choice of her anyway, why not just ax her off before the choosing ceremony? It makes no sense. I mean, by that logic, Constance is totally out, because she's all like, yeah, they're going to kill, I'm going to be really rebellious and go, ah. But, like, oh, it was just not good. So basically, the prince's choice was pretty irrelevant, and now Bethany is the princess. But wait, Victoria's gonna do her plan. Oh, never mind, she's not doing it yet. Instead, the prince is all like, the other six girls are going with me to my country, and I'm gonna protect them. But oh, the queen has a kill switch installed in the clones. She hits it. Three of them die. Three don't die, including Victoria, Constance, and I forgot who the third one is. Um, so yeah, four of the girls are alive. Um, Bethany is now a princess, thanks to Prince basically being a pushover to the queen, who really should have just, honestly, like I said, she should have just axed off the girls she didn't like 
before the choosing ceremony because that was a very big sham. Kill switch is like three of them are still alive, and now finally Victoria decides to reveal the princess is still alive. And it doesn't go over great. Um, the queen ends up being all like, "Okay, I'll let you go on one condition. I'll let you go if you get it, but you have to go alone." And of course, um, Kale tries to come back and save the day, gets caught, that was kind of useless. So he was kind of useless in that regard. Um, and she decides to go off on her own to save everyone that's still alive. <sighs> and of course, she takes Misty with her, the best character. <laughs> I'm kidding. They're, Misty is a great, great horse, but not the best character. <laughs> And that was Royal Replicas. Oh, oh dear. Um, it was good. I liked it. Um, let's see, what are the things that I did like? Um, I did like the, uh, I liked the char our main character. Um, I, I kind of liked Kale and the Prince. I could have liked him a little better. I, I love the horseback ride to the point where I would recommend this to people that read a lot of horse books because this I feel like could get them in the door to fantasy. Like it's just great. Um I like Mina. I like the dynamic between Mina and Victoria. Um, I liked Constance. She was great. Um I liked the revelation that the princess is alive. I did not see that coming. Um that's the big things and what I didn't like. I did not like Mina and Joanna's father. Um, he was creepy, abusive, kind of rapey. Well, I got that vibe from him anyway. <laughs> it was really creepy. I hope he gets axed off in one of the sequels, preferably with literal axe. Um, I wasn't too fond of the character Joanna. She didn't the older sister, she didn't really seem to serve a purpose. Um, the queen was a different kind of villain. Um, I think her motivations kind of didn't make a whole lot of sense. I didn't really like that. I mean, you're gonna, you're essentially killing six versions of your daughter. That's pretty twisted. <laughs> um, let's see, is there anything else I really didn't like? Um, the love interests weren't the most interesting. Uh, Kale's a type cabbage, I think. <laughs> Kale. Oh, oh, maybe it's a play. Gale, Kale, they rhyme. That's my fan theory now. Kale is not gonna get her in the end. Prince will, because. His name rhymes with Gale from The Hunger Games, and Gale didn't get Katniss. <laughs> oh, now I want to snap on some Kale. I need to go to the grocery store. <laughs> anyway, um, so that was, like, boys could have been a little more interesting. Um, although, admittedly, I was reading it more for the whole cloning drama and all the royal intrigue and not as much the love romancy stuff. Um, I wish I could have shown a bit more of their daily life. That would have been nice. That's something that the selection did really well. The glittering court and the pageant did okay on. Um, where would... Let's see. Um, there was one thing I... Oh, I did not like the kill switch. That, I feel like, made no sense. I hope we get an explanation as to why it didn't work on three of them. Because that didn't really make sense. I feel like there was better ways that they could have axed off some of the girls instead. Um, let's see, then there was one thing in this book, though, that I outright hated. So, first of all, it started off great, because, I mean, she's, her interests in books, certain book came up. Um, it started off great, um, she's, Victoria's into horses, which is amazing. She's also very into reading, which is amazing. She, like, speaks to me. I, I love this character. I can really relate to this character because of all that, other than the fact that, um, I'm, not a clone, and I've never 
been cloned, I think. <gasps> Unless, come back, other me. It's not safe out there on your own. Come back, other me. Oh, anyway, that was, that was a little random. Uh, if you see another me running around, though, please, please, uh, return her, okay? Thanks. Um, so anyway, um, basically there, she started out reading, you know, Pride and Prejudice is a good book. It's classic. I've got nothing against Pride and Prejudice. Even when he throws zombies in it, it's not terrible. <laughs> um, but she goes from reading something like Pride and Prejudice to all of a sudden, she's, this really did crash in my sus suspension of disbelief. She started reading Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she literally started reading Breaking Dawn, and then she went and realized it was a series and started reading Twilight, and now all of a sudden she's reading the Twilight Saga and her incredible book. She's talking about how the whole romance issues and the vampires and the werewolves, now it's all relatable to her, and I'm just like, no, stop, no. So that, that kind of, like, ruined, ruined it for me. Um... So yeah, one star, zero, no, one star, zero, no, zero, negative, negative five stars, negative, it's negative stars now, all because of Twilight. <laughs> I, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, okay. Um, so, basically, final verdict, I did really like this book, um, Royal Replicas is good, it's got a few flaws, some things that could be improved on, it, it would be better if she was reading a book that wasn't Twilight. <laughs> um, I loved the horse aspects. I loved how she was a bookworm. I loved the intrigue. Um, for the most part, things worked really well. I'm going to be looking forward to reading the rest of the series. Um, in the comments below, I'm going to provide a link for how you can purchase this book. You can get either the first one by itself or you can get in digital form the complete series. And I would recommend that so you can read it right away. Although, if you like print editions like I do, I wish I had a print edition of this. I hope to get one soon. Um, you can get print and digital and be awesome. Um, right now, this whole series is available via a book bug deal. But that ends in a few hours, so you guys might not make it in time. And then I will also be putting in links for... The selection, the pageant, and glitter and court, and where you can buy those. Oh, I forgot to get my final score for this book. Um, four and a half stars out of five. Um, it's not quite perfect, but then again, no book is. Repeat after me. There is no such thing as a perfect book. There is only such thing as books that you enjoy and books you don't enjoy. So, thank you for following this video and my rambling this long. Um, this has been my first book booktube video. Um, thank you for tuning into the first episode of booktube talk. There is going to be links in the description for our coffee and our Patreon as well as my Tapas account where I write original fiction and you can support the channel via liking, subscribing, really subscribe, hit that like button, um, share it on social media, tell your friends about it, even if they just want to watch it so they can make fun of the chick with the squeaky voice talking about books. Um, and then if you feel so in your heart, please donate to either our coffee, which is a one-time donation that we get immediately, our Patreon, which we get on a monthly, which you can do one time or monthly in a variety of amounts, or if you read the stuff on top of and like it, Please feel free to watch some videos to get some ink on the Tapas app and donate some ink to us. Those are the various ways you can support us. This has been a Dimension Seal Studios production. And thank you for tuning in.